Welcome back to the show. If you are just tuning in, you are tuning in just at the right time because we were just about to get into what we're talking about. And so like, you know, we always do on Science of the Gospel, we talk about science, whether it's biology, physics, chemistry, computer science, mathematics, whatever science you can think about, that's what we do here on the show. And so today we're going to be going into the biology stream of science. We're going to be looking at the blood. We're going to be looking at the concept of blood and what it does in the body and the spirituality of it and the connection with God's word. And the blood is such a crucial part of human life. Even the word of God says the, the life is in the blood. And so once the blood is not in a certain part of the body, it's like that area is lifeless. It's not like it's like the area is lifeless. It is actually lifeless. And so aside from the biological things that the blood does, it also looks like it has some spiritual side to it, but we're not going to get to that. Let's just look at the science first. And the blood contains a lot of things, and then we know that it does help carry oxygen around the body. It does help carry nutrients around the body. And when it comes to transportation of things around your body, whether it's uh, you, took, you take a medication, but then it moves things around the entire human body, oxygen, food, nutrients, and then it takes it to the areas that are needed in the body. And so the blood is so crucial to life. And in fact, it is life. And if you have been following Science of the Gospel, we have, we've spoken about the human heart and what it does. And then we know that the human heart does help or circulate blood around the body. And then one of the major reasons why that is, is because of, you know, the circulation of oxygen. And so the blood in the human body, and not just in the human body now, even blood in every form of animal is the life, is the essence of life. And it does carry all the essential things. And to think about it that the greater part of the blood is even made up of water. And like I, like I always say, if you have been following us on Science of the Gospel, I have also spoken about water. You need to continue watching Science of the Gospel. We always talk about science and interesting facts. And so to think about the fact that a major part of what is in the blood is also water. And then we've seen the side of water that is not just scientific, but what the Word of God says. And so the blood is so crucial to life and it's crucial to our existence, whether it's in the area of nutrition, whether it's in the area of circulation, whether it's in the area of reproduction, um, respiration, it is life. And we look at the Word of God and we see what does the Word of God really say aside from the biological advantage or the biological role, not advantage now, the biological role of what the blood does? Because we can't deny the importance of the biological role of blood in, in an organism, in an entity. Are, are we talking about the red blood cells or the white blood cells that even defend you know, our bodies from um, infections and the things that it does? It you know, protects us when, when we have a cut and it protects our, you know, our system from being infected. And so aside from circulating blood and so, so many other things, I mean, if it does that much physically, it will do that much beyond physical because Life is more than what we see physically and we always use the things that we see physically to actually understand and learn about the things that we cannot see. And I find the human blood very fascinating because one day I was watching, um, I was watching a documentary, then I was doing some research about the human heart and I was watching a documentary about an open surgery and how that they, tra they were doing a, a heart transplant. And then they, they took this heart from you know, a donor and then they put it into another person's body. But the interesting thing about what happened that I find so very fascinating is the fact that before the blood hits the person's, rather before the heart hits the person's body, it was not pumping. But then the moment the heart interacted with the person's blood, like just like after a few seconds, it just started pumping again, like it, like it, it injected it with some jolt of power. And then it just started working. And I'm like, like seriously? I'm like, what is in this blood? Like, what, why is this blood so powerful and important? The blood carries the life. And there is no doubt about that. Because having, having even seen that kind of documentary being done and actually observe that. Because if you look at the heart, once the heart stops beating, the life stops. If the blood can then make the heart that is being transplanted to start beating again, we need to take a, take a look at this thing called blood. Oh. 
Okay, so right now, let's just take a short break. And when we return, we'll talk about more about the blood. Welcome back to the show. If you are just tuning in, we have been talking about the blood. And I told you an interesting story and experience that I watched in a documentary about how the blood behaves with the human heart. And so the blood is alive. So leaving the biological part of what the blood does and then going into the scripture and seeing how the scripture relates with the blood or to the blood. When you go to the Old Testament, you see how um, God um, instructs the children of Israel to, you know, use the blood. Beginning from when they were going out from the, the land of Egypt, it says, oh, put the mark on the lintel so that when you pass, I will know that, you know, you're not a candidate for the angel of death. And then they get into the promised land and then he tells them, okay, this is what you should sacrifice. And then the blood, you know, really does play a significant role in the life of the children of Israel in terms of, you know, covering their sacrifices, sacrifices in general. And then right there, God tells them in the law, the life is blood. Don't eat food that, con don't eat food that contains blood. Don't eat it there. So, I mean, this blood oh, is something. That means it's not just a physical entity. It does have its impact in the spirit. And just like water does, as the same way water is not just a physical entity, it, it, it does have its own spiritual significance. And so looking at the fact that blood does not not just only have a physical thing that it does, and we see the value and we appreciate the value of blood in the, in the scientific world, it does have a spiritual impact. You know, I remember talking about the nature of science in one of the episodes I did earlier, and I said that science is a path to knowledge. We use science and science discoveries to get to know. But we know from the Word of God that the Word of God is truth. And everything that we really learn in truth is learned from God's Word. And so when we observe from the Word of God, you know, the, the, the positioning and the, the, the understanding that the Word of God gives to blood, we should consider it something very sacred and even try to, you know, study it more, understand it more and even appreciate its value. When you think about coming into the New Testament and how that the blood of Christ was shed, definitely knowing and understanding the scientific and biological importance of blood, in the New Testament, it will carry such weight. And now two important things about blood. The fact that in the realm of the spirit, before God, it's in significant for sacrifice and it is significant for life. And the reason it is significant for sacrifice, it is because it carries life. And so when we think about life in the new world, in the new creation, not in the new world, as the new creation, we look at what life are we talking about? In the book of John chapter 1, it says that we do not owe our lives to that of a physical father. He said, but to God. And it really brings to mind uh, a discovery that was made by a, an archaeologist, a scientist, in the name of Ron Watt. And I found his discovery very amazing because it really does bring that scripture to life when he says they do not owe their life to that of a physical father. And you know, when the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We know that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, but he came as a man and he did have the human blood flowing in his stream. But what was so special about his blood? And this is what the scientist Ron Watt was able to find out and was able to discover. And this is very fascinating. And when we believe that Jesus is the son of God, science today tells us that it is so. Do you want to hear the story? Do you want to know what Ron Wyatt found out? That's what I'm here to tell you in Science of the Gospel. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, let me tell you. Now, he was able to get access to the dried, like from his archaeological search and research, you know, the, the, a very dead form of the blood. And he got to a lab in Israel to take a look at what was contained in this blood. And then he told the, the people in the lab and, and he told them, please, could you help me reconstitute this blood and let me find out what is inside and what it contains. And then they tell him that uh, this blood is a dead blood. I mean, 
there's, there, there really isn't much you can actually find from that blood. He said, don't worry, just do the work. And when you want to check this out, let me know what you find. And then they call him to say, okay, we want to check out this blood. Let us tell you what we found out. And then they are looking into it. They reconstitute it in a medium. And then just knowing by their scientific understanding that they are just certain things, they are just certain information you cannot get from dead blood. For example, a chromosome counts. The white blood cells in, the, in a dead blood can't really be reconstituted. But then they are looking into this blood and they are seeing some very unusual things. For example, they are able to make a chromosome count from that blood and they are surprised and they are amazed. And then Ron is looking at them and saying, what are you guys looking at? What are you talking about? Let me know what, what you found out. Let me know. And they tell him, okay, this blood that you got, where did you get it? He says, just tell me, just, just let me know what you guys found out. Okay, so, and they are telling him that, see, this blood is supposedly dead blood, but it appears that it's actually not dead, it's alive, because the, the white blood cells are responding, and then we are able to get a chromosome count. Interesting. Now, this is the biggie. Now, the fact that they're able to get a chromosome count is that the chromosome count that they get is not 46, it's 24. Now, if you know anything about chromosome and biology and DNA and chromosome count, you will know that for a regular human being, the chromosome count is 46, 26, 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad, and together it becomes 46. But from the male, is either the X or the Y, which determines the gender. So when it's a Y, it's a male, and when it's an X, it's a female. And so the two put together becomes 46. But this person had 24. How? And they said the 23 is just from the female side and it was only one, which is the Y that determines the gender from the male side. And so this blood is not from a physical or biological father. And says, where did you get this blood? And he answers them because he did the research in Israel. He said, it's the blood of your Messiah. At that point, personally watching that documentary, I was blown away. I was blown away because my personal study of God's word, looking at the importance of blood, first of all to biology and then to sacrifices and life. And now knowing that getting into the scientific experiment of the blood, the life, the source is God himself, the word. This is totally, absolutely amazing. If you want to know about it, you can go online and do your research and, you know, read about it, watch the video and get better information. But the essence of bringing this to you from the scientific perspective is to let you understand the truth of the gospel. What the gospel promises is life. This life that is from God and that Jesus brought into the world. And so when the word of God came to Mary and it said, oh, you're going to conceive, that word was God and he became flesh and it was evident in the blood and remember the blood is life and that is really the only way we could really find out this life was really directly from source but yes it is it is not from a physical father from the story of the birth of the Lord Jesus we know that Mary was a virgin and so the birth was not the regular you know, reproductive process biologically that the male and female will go through. And so it was by the word. And so the life that was expressed, that is even manifested in that blood is still alive. That is one thing, it is alive. And then it also proves that it's not just only alive, it represents the life of God. I mean, another bigger miracle would be that, how can someone have 24 chromosomes and just be like a normal human being as though they were 46. That's a bigger one. It's a much more bigger one. And so, so think about it. Not only that we read it in scripture that they do not owe their life to that of a physical father. Science agrees that the life that Jesus demonstrated in this world is directly from the word. Let's digest on that a bit and we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll get back to the show. Don't go away.
Okay, welcome back to the show. If you are just tuning in, we have been having an amazing time talking about the blood. And we found out something interesting. I shared something interesting. One of the first interesting things I shared was the fact that I watched a documentary where when the, when the human heart was being transplanted and when it came in contact with the blood, it came alive again. And also the research res results found by the scientist Ron Watt and how that he found that the chromosome count in the blood of our Lord Jesus was 24 as opposed to 46 in, in you know, regular humans. And so this really shows us that the life that the Lord brought to the earth is what he, he gives us when we become part of the body of Christ. It is eternal life. The life that comes from God's word when God says, when God speaks. And to have this life is easy and it's by faith. The Bible says if you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. And what happens? You receive eternal life. Eternal life is imparted into your spirit. That same life that God has, that eternal life that makes God eternal is what you receive. And that's really what makes you saved. Because the Bible says, there is no name under heaven given among men by which men should be saved. And the blood of Christ was shed for the total blotting out in the Old Testament, it was a covering, but in the New Testament, it's a total blotting out. It doesn't exist. It's that powerful, that powerful. And now this life is presented to you. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive this life? Are you ready to accept the Lordship of Jesus? If you are ready, I'm going to lead you in a prayer and you say this prayer after me. But God will hear you as you say it because you are talking to him. And when you do, he will impact with you with eternal life. Are you ready? You say, oh Lord God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe he died and he was raised by the glory of the Father. I declare today that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. By faith, I receive eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord for saving me. I am now a child of God. Congratulations if you just said that prayer. You have received eternal life. You are now part of God's family. Let us know if you gave your heart to the Lord. There's a number being displayed on the screen. Do call us and let us know you give your heart to the Lord. Or you can also send us an email and let us know you give your heart to the Lord. And aside that, if you've been enjoying the program, if you've been enjoying this, uh, this series of Science of the Gospel, let us know. Let us know what you've learned and let us know how this program has impacted you. If you give your heart to the Lord, we want to know. But this is about the much we can take on today's episode. But you can be sure that I always come to you every other time with beautiful and insightful and exciting topics on science of the gospel where I always bring the science and the word of God and I put it together in a way that you can always relate. But for now, we're going to, you know, end this program for this week. But I remain your ever-excited host, Bookie Bash. Stay with us on the, on the TV station. Stay with us here, right here on Love World. God bless you. <laughs>